Welcome to the Palm Springs Public Library's Adult Craft Program for the Button Elephant. We're going to be creating a little button elephant today with balloons using different colors of buttons on canvas. Please stop by the library within the next week and pick up your craft kit, which will have everything in it that you need to start your program of building a button elephant. However, you will need to supply some sort of adhesive. You can use regular school glue, tacky glue, or a glue gun. The school glue will take a couple of days to dry. The tacky glue will take about a day to dry. And your glue gun will just take a few minutes. Um, I preferred using the tacky glue because it gives me time to position the buttons and it doesn't take all that long to dry. So today I will be using just the tacky glue. Okay, from your home kit you will have the following. You will have a set of instructions that will give you step by step what you need to do or you can follow along with this video, whichever you prefer. Also in it you will find a canvas with a pre-painted little elephant in watercolor. The reason it's pre-painted is so that when you put the buttons on the white canvas does not show through. So this is what we're going to be using today to glue the buttons on. Also in your packet you will have a packet of blue buttons and a packet of additional colored buttons and some baker's twine. You will also have a 3M strip which you can use to put on the back of your canvas and attach it to the wall when you are finished. So what we're first of all going to do is locate our buttons and dump them out and sort them by size. So these are all of our buttons and we're going to take them and sort them out by size so that we're going to start with the biggest buttons first. So these are our biggest buttons and then from there we're going to go down by size and fill in all of the requisite areas. So we're going to start out first of all with our largest buttons and I prefer the tacky glue because it gives me a chance to spread it around and fill in the vast majority of my area without having to worry about the, the glue drying too fast and it gives me a chance to reposition the buttons if I need to. So what you want to do is line your buttons up in whichever pattern that you would like to fill in as much as you can with the largest buttons first. And it's just like putting a puzzle together. So here I've got my biggest buttons already put on and then now I'm going to start filling in with the smaller buttons. Now you can also position the buttons anywhere you would like. There is no rhyme or reason as to the pattern I'm working on. So I'm working on getting all of my buttons put on as much as I can. That was too big. So then you start filling in with some of the smaller buttons. Once you've got the big ones on, start filling in with some of the smaller ones. So that's your first layer. Your first layer is simply getting on all of the buttons you can. And getting them set up so that you have your first layer on the elephants. Okay. okay, 
So there I have the very beginnings, and it just takes a few moments to get those on. Then I'm going to start filling in with some of my smaller buttons here. And now I'm going to start layering a little bit more over the line. Now, it will take just a few minutes for most of you to fill this in, which is perfectly fine. This is not that slow of a pro project. So I'm going to start filling in now some of the spaces that are available with some of the smaller buttons. And as you see, they go on very quickly. It's okay if you overlap a little bit, that's fine. The line that's on the top. So it's kind of difficult to get a straight line out of a curved line that you see here but if you use the smaller ones to fill in and we're going to put a second we're going to put a second layer on top of these so we're just filling everything in getting as much of it filled in as possible And it just takes a little, of course my glue has to come out. There we go. Okay. One nice thing about using the tacky glue is as you see I can reposition some of my buttons. If I use a glue gun I can't reposition my things as quickly as I could if I was just using the tacky glue. So, now the one thing I want to do at the very end here of the trunk is to put two buttons and leave a little bit of space between these two buttons and the button that's over here. The reason for that is when I have my balloons up here, the baker's twine will come down and go between these two buttons and I'll put another button on top to hold them down. So leave a little bit of room between the two buttons here and the one that's right there. So you see that little bit of whoops, little bit of room right in there for the baker's twine. Okay? All right. Now we're going to continue filling in with these buttons for a second layer. So here we go. We're going to start out and create a second layer. Oh, I see I have one space here. I can put a small button. Okay. All right. Here we go. Now, sometimes you might have to tilt the buttons and have them go on top of the other ones, which is perfectly fine. Now see how this one is sticking way out there? We may have to pull that one back in because it's sticking out a little bit too far. And then we can, well, that one might be even too big. So let's fill in with some smaller ones. That's part of the fun of working on this is you can change them as we go along. Now see that looks much better, it fits a lot better. And we're going to now start doing the second layer. So you may have to tilt the buttons and fill in a little bit on their side. Okay, like that. All right. do 
don't be afraid of tilting the buttons. That's perfectly okay. Yeah, on our sample here, you can see where I've layered the buttons. You can see that there's two layers at least for a lot of the things. And that's what we're doing now. We're adding the second layer to fill in so that the blue area behind is covered up. Now this is where some of these medium-sized buttons may come in handy. It'll fill things in a little bit quicker. And you may need a little bit more glue. There we go. All right. And we'll do a little bit here. There we go. We filled in most of the areas. There's probably still a few more that have to be done, but that gives you an idea of how to layer them. And let's see, let's try one right here. There we are. All right, so that's the basics of how to put the blue buttons on. Now, in addition to the blue buttons, you have a package of other multicolored buttons. They're green, which will represent the grass that'll go underneath the elephant's feet, and the red ones are for the balloons. There should also be a white and a black button for the eye, and a large, darker colored one for the ear. So the first ones I'm going to finish putting on are the eye and the ear, okay? So the eye, all right, is going to go right in here. I can move a button out of the way since I've been using the tacky glue. I can always, there's my eye. Let me forward just a little bit. And then on top of the white one, I glue a little black one. Okay, so there's that one, and then this is going to be for the ear. So I'm going to fill this one up with a little bit of glue on the back, give it a tap, and there's my ear. All right. The grass is going to be underneath the elephant's feet, so I'm going to draw a line with my glue right under the elephant's feet here for the grass. Okay, and then I'm going to take my little buttons that are green and line them up to create a little green strip the elephant would be walking on. Now, the tacky glue will dry clear, so you don't have to worry about that. But again, tacky glue takes sometimes overnight to dry. So once you have everything glued down, I suggest that you wait until at least the next day to hang it up on the wall. One more right back 
here. There we go. All right. Now, you may have extra buttons left over, which is perfectly fine. We made sure there was enough in your kit for all sorts of different situations. Now, you know, also in your kit, you have the baker's twine. There should be at least a half a dozen or more of the baker's twine. And then you have the various little button, red buttons that you have. And now comes the time you need to figure out if you're going to be using all of these or just two or three. So line them up on the canvas and arrange them in whichever order that you would like to get an idea of how you want your balloons. Okay. So you can arrange them in any pattern that you would like. But before we start gluing these down, we want to glue the baker's twine to the back side of the buttons. So we're going to take and whichever side you want to have the glue on, put that there and then take one of the strips of your baker's twine and glue it on. Okay, then set that aside and let's do the next one. There we are, and we're going to glue on the baker's twine here. My fingers are getting a little sticky, so bear with me. So we're going to glue on here. And I'm only going to have five balloons, so I'm getting a little tacky glue there. Okay. Whoop. Okay. There we are. All right, now you want to start and take your balloons and then arrange them in a pattern that you would like. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to hold this down and run it through between those little buttons that I had earlier. Okay, so I'm going to take the tack, the um, the button. There we go, and run it through there. There we go. Now strings for balloons are usually straight. So you might want to work with your button and your strings just a little bit until you get them to range the way you want to. And then I'm going to do the next one. Okay. And I'm going to take and run the string again down through. And I'm going to do the next one. should say. All right, here we go. There's that one. All right, and the last one, the great big one. Now you may wish to use the glue gun on the, the buttons up here. It might make it a little bit easier. And then you can use the tacky glue for the other stuff. It's my preference. I'm not saying it's good or bad, but that's just the way I prefer to do it. Now the last thing you want to do is to take your little blue button and put on top 
of your button, your strings right there. This will hold it down and it looks like the elephant's kind of wrapping his trunk around the strings themselves. The last thing you may want to do is to take a pair of scissors and clip the strings that you see right there. Once it's dry, then you want to take your 3M strip, peel this back, and peel this one back. This is a Velcro strip in there, so you can take it off the wall and reapply it. Once you've peeled the little strip of 3M tape back, and you've applied it to the back side of your pachyderm, then you can put it up on the wall and enjoy it. So there you go. This is your button elephant precious pachyderm. Thank you for watching, and uh, we will see you next time for the terracotta wind chimes. You'll be 